Right then, guys, um, welcome to another Bubble and Squeak podcast with us. This is episode two, and we've got the guys from Tots Coaching. We have got Anthony and we have got Mick just over here. So thank you guys for uh, being on our podcast. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks very much for having us. Oh, not a problem. So then I've been looking through your Facebook page um, of Tops Coaching and uh, I've noticed you've got 2,204 likes and the most important thing you've got on there is you've got 125 five-star reviews. Well done, gents. That is absolutely phenomenal, unreal. How do you feel about that? Is that all right? Yeah, that's um, that's some really good positive feedback. Um, we, saw, we work hard and we're diligent at the coaching that we do, so it, it's nice to be appreciated by both the, uh, the parents uh, and the children. So, like you said, like we mentioned, it was coaching. It is coaching that you do, told, called Tops Coaching, based in Wakefield and the surrounding areas, I'm guessing, yeah? Yeah, that's right. We uh, deliver sessions all over Wakefield, uh, as well as Castleford area. And obviously, we're looking to branch out over the years in the future months. And just get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the plan. Sounds like a plan. Right then, guys. So, um, obviously, thank you very much for being on our podcast, our third podcast that we're doing here at Bubble and Squeak. Um, we want to get to know a bit more about your business, uh, what they do, how they do it, and a bit about themselves. So, would you be able to start us off, Anthony, by what is your basically your role in TOTS coaching? So, my role is one of the lead coaches, obviously developing some of the younger staff that we've got with us, as well as doing the accounts, marketing, and the web design. That's what you do. Mick, what, what are you in? What's your role in the company? Yeah, as Anthony says, he does the, the web design, the accounts. I kind of leave that all to him. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think that sort of uh, my time is spent upon uh, designing lesson plans, thinking what would be age appropriate, attractive to young children, trying to make it as engaging and as uh, as enjoyable as possible. Also, I'm a lead coach on uh, most of the sessions, and as like Anthony, yeah, I take a great deal of pl- pride and uh, enjoyment in uh, developing some of the young coaches that we've got on board. Oh, fantastic. So it's a grow- growing company. How, when did Tots Coaching start? When did it start for you both? Whose idea was it? Um, did it just come something that you've always wanted to do? Oh, uh, to be fair, I think it was more my idea. I was fortunate looking working for Mick whilst at university, and I'd already been uh, doing a bit of coaching at my local team uh, with this age group. And I kind of saw that there was a market that wasn't there. There wasn't any advertised coaching for three to six year olds. So I asked Mick if he wanted to have a go at it five and a half years ago. And now, so um, it's just grown and grown from there. We started with an hour session, and now we've got. 15 20 hours worth of work each week crazy in five years that how that's come along so then with with your starting for it what what coaching do you provide what age groups is it for um we have uh, uh, coaching uh, for walking to three years old which we call our tiny tots it's based around agility coordination and movement skills uh the the fun interactive games uh getting them prepared for either nursery or uh, mainstream school From there, if they wish, uh, they can progress at three to either do rugby or football sessions. Those are three to six-year-olds. Once they've probably um, outgrown our uh, three to six-year-old sessions in football, we have a a development session on a Saturday morning, which is seven to 11. And then on a Wednesday evening, we have our TC Performance Academy, which is like an offshoot of TOTS coaching, which is once again for children who've outgrown our sessions or for children who are already playing grassroots football who want a little bit of extra coaching. And that's done on a Wednesday evening, and that's also for the ages of 7 to 11 for both boys and girls. All oh, right, so it's a, mix, a mixed group then. You just don't don't just have the boys and the girls separate. It's just mixed group. Well, I know it's a mixed group because my son does it with them So on a Monday evening, so he does the football uh, down in Normington. Um, with regards to those services then, where, and I've just mentioned it then, one of your, your sessions takes place in Normington, where do the sessions take place? Where where, where do you have them? Where's your most popular sessions? Uh, as most popular sessions is a Saturday morning session at Horbury, um, but we also got Saturday mornings at Glass Out, and that's the second biggest uh, venue. Probably mostly down to them being weekends and people having more free time, but we're in Osset, uh, Durker, Renfort, Stanley, Normington, like you said, we're your young one. Um, we've got Kirkham Gate as well. Uh, so we've got quite a wide range of venues for sessions at the moment. So, so equating to about twenty hours work, which yeah. <laughs> which is good from start off, right? And so, with regards to where the sessions take place, like you said, in 
in the local area, um, you must you must get quite a few stories, especially working with kids. Um, do any of them any spring to mind um, that you can tell us about with regards to the coaching side? It, whether it's the kids themselves, or I can bet there's some about the families as well and the parents. Yeah, there's probably been quite a lot with the children. It's, it's sort of hard to pinpoint one particular one, but I know I've sort of come undone a couple of times in different sessions when I've brought the kids over and brought their adults across and I've said sort of mums and dads and grandmas or uh, granddads, and I'm actually accused a couple of the mums of being uh, grandmas, <laughs> which, 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 as you can imagine, I was uh, swiftly reprimanded for, and now... Couldn't go down in, well. No, no, not at all. Now, instead of sort of using grandma, granddad, dad or mum, I tend to use the word adults. So it saves me from making that mistake again. You cop out. No, <laughs> So then, with regards to uh, the sessions and things that you do uh, with the coaching, how, how do parents, mums, dads, grandmas, granddads, be able to book their, their, their children onto your sessions? How, how simple is it for them to do? How, does, how would they contact you? Uh, easiest way to contact us is probably over this Facebook page. That's where we get a lot of us contact. But we've also got uh, text callers, numbers out there. Um, people do search us over Google. would tend to be, be quite high up on the Google search as well or the football and rugby sessions for that specific age group. Is that just Tots Coaching? Is that what they just yeah, type just in? Yeah, Tots Coaching. You'll find us on Facebook, top of there. You can see them all in the uniforms they've got now. So if you see the, the logos and everything, then get yourselves booked on, get yourselves having a look at what they do. Um, with regards to that, I've heard you've got a new booking system you've been raving about at the minute. Mick's not fantastic at it, as you've told me. Yeah. That's <laughs> and you're it's down to you, Anthony, really. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a probably a blessing for me. It's made my life easy rather than to and throw in Excel documents between each other of who's attended, who's not attended, who need to chase up, um, obviously for payments and things. It's just a nice, easy, simple system as you've found yourself, you know. You and it's e easy for, for parents to actually book via that system yeah. so they don't actually have to come to you. They can find what session you want, guys. Um, literally book it on, whether it be football, rugby and, and the levels of coaching that you're after. So, yeah, and it's just all paid online? All paid online. There's still options for some venues because we've got some, obviously Saturday mornings, a lot of them are still in a habit of paying at the beginning of a block because some of the sessions work monthly and some work in six-week blocks. So you're looking at basically systemising your system so no cash has to be transferred or anything like that. It's yeah. just solely through your new booking system. Yeah, that's the plan. That's fantastic, fantastic. I, lo I love a good system in place that sorts your, your lives out and makes everything a lot easier for you to do. It's, it's For a business owner myself, it just brings everything to make it, like I said, so much easier, less time-consuming, and just you can focus more on your lesson plans and getting your marketing up to scratch, I take it. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the things... Uh, as well as running tots, I work in a school, so I've had, I have cut my hours down to push tots now a bit further. But with this new system, I've got so much extra time just to improve the marketing side. So hopefully things like this and the different marketing aspects we've got can do that. So you said that you work in a school now. Which school is it? Are you allowed to say? Yeah, I work at Brampton Ellis at the moment. Uh, but f as well as that, uh, tots is in a couple of schools. We're at Crickles and St. James's and we've got uh, another school I'm off to meet this week that potentially looking to, to work with us. So you actually go into the schools and just provide your sessions? Is that, are they done over lunchtime or is it is it just who who pays for that? Is the school involved in paying for that and it's uh, something they do as extracurricular? It's, uh, it's an after school club at the moment, the one that we've got. Um, at the moment, the kids pay for it, um, but if it doesn't match the school, um, do contribute to subsidise it and make it cheaper for parents. So, so basically, school working. They're using the, what they call the sports premium. Um, just try and support kids and get them active and using us to, to help do that as well. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Everybody's getting a bit, well, kids are getting accused now of being too much on the computer games and everything, and you're here to actually get them up and running around and things like that, I suppose, and just getting them a bit more active and knowing what we, well, what I used to do as a kid and everybody else instead of just playing FIFA all day or whatever they do. With, um, with regards to... Um, doing the job that you do and obviously working with the kids, do you have any, any memorable things that, um, that that spring to mind that are very rewarding for, for yourselves, uh, maybe one of each, so something that you've done with either a certain child or helped a family in a certain way that have improved th their, their, t their life or anything like that? Have you got anything that comes to mind? I think the biggest one that springs to mind, and it's not one particular child, it's probably it could be across the board at all our sessions. We get some kids come in, 
walk through the door, they don't need their hands holding, they, they get a ball and they start kicking around straight away, where other children need a lot of support, a lot of coaxing, a lot of understanding. Um, we try very hard at Tots Coaching to give them that. Uh, and then once after a couple of weeks, it's really sort of pleasing to see that child who was a little bit shy, a little bit hesitant. He basically comes in, kicks the doors open, shouts, here I am, grabs a ball, and off he goes. And then obviously when his parents come up and say, his confidence improves so much since you start this session. It, it does give you kind of a buzz, you know, and it's nice to see the children developing, not just in the sort of sporting attributes, but sort of the, the social skills, confidence. It's nice to think that we coach the whole child, not just uh, their sporting skills. Yeah, well I, well, I can vouch for that one. I mean, my son is, well, he's four now, uh, extremely shy. I think I had to do the first four sessions, five sessions with him and get him involved. But the guy's actually got him out of his shell and now he's the first one there, last one to leave and booting his ball around before even the session starts. So it's it's fantastic. I, I appreciate what you've done for my son and hopefully there's a lot more families out there that'll do it as well and appreciate it. It's it's fantastic, honestly, from, from the training level and the... Uh, the training sessions that you put on, um, my son absolutely adores it. He, he can't wait to get there. I mean, he does he does two on a Monday, which is crazy. He does one at his nursery with Mick, and then he, he, he's, he's with Mick again on that evening after a bite to eat. So it, it's bonkers. Honestly, it's fantastic what you do. Why would people then, I mean, I can vouch for you, I'd five-star rating non-stop. I, I just think you're fantastic, you guys. But why, why would you basically put Tots Coaching at the top of what you do. What, what are the reasons why families should come and see you and be coached by you guys? What what is What makes you stand out more? What could you tell people to help sell yourselves? Um, probably f- for me, obviously, I'm um, a little bit older than Anthony, uh, only just. Um, I'd like to think that sort of we, we coach in a style that the, kid, the children that sort of come through our doors uh, basically treat them as, as our kids and uh, that's the way I like to think they're being coached, looked after, um, encouraged. We spend uh, a, a lot of time on uh, with some children, 1v1s, investing that little bit of extra time because I I believe every child is similar to a present. It's just that some presents are opened earlier than others. Um, so probably that's that's why I think we invest probably more in the in the children the, the sessions are sort of uh age appro- age appropriate so if we put a session out it's nothing that the children can't do so if they can't do it, it leads to disappointment we sort of give them activities that they're going to enjoy that they can do so then they get a good feeling about themselves um and i'm sure there's other companies out there do a, a really good job but that's probably we i'd like to think we probably do it a little bit better yeah, a little more personal. Well, yeah, again, definitely. I can vouch for that. Yeah. It's a lot more personal. The, the classes that you hold aren't, aren't full of 30, 40, 50 kids. They're actually smaller classes, and they actually get taught what, like you said, the, the various skills that you're you're teaching them that day. And if they don't get it, you get to spend time with the children to actually improve them. Yeah, I think we also, in our sessions, we sort of not, we don't just coach and we ask we're question and answer sessions. So if they're not at school yet, then it gets them used to sort of listening, putting the hand in the air, asking questions, so it is a little bit of sort of preparation, like I said before, before either, for either nursery or for school, just getting them used to that sort of process, sitting down, be nice and quiet, maybe sharing with other children like they have to do at school, lining up in a straight line, simple things like that, really. Mm, it keeps them all, all getting more prepped, like you said, prepped and yeah. ready, just some social skills there. Right then, so you've told us a bit about your business, um, fantastic business that it is. Um, what I'm... I want to get a, a, to know you a little bit more, so a few things about yourselves. So, um, what? here we go. Quite a straightforward one. What football team or rugby team do you support? So, f- my football team's Leeds United. Right, uh, same as me, that's good. Yeah, so it's a great start, that. <laughs> not, not been a good spell, but, you know. Things will come up. Well, it, was be- it, was be- it was better with the result that we got last night, to be fair. Yeah. Well, well, we didn't get it, but Stoke went, did went, us a favour. It went, went our way, didn't it? Um, in terms of rugby, uh, Wakefield Trinity for me. You have to live on the doorstep from being up to five, so I'm not a, a big supporter, but I do follow and make sure results are going your way. As well as can do. So. Go on then, Mick. I think I'll have to do the rugby first. Uh, I'm not an avid supporter of sort of, or a follower of football, but... I think um, t- I'm going to name drop now um, a good friend of mine, James Ford. He coaches the Oxford United in the Championship. 
So probably that may have to be my favourite team for a very tenuous link. Um, football, that is a difficult one. Um, I'd probably say, yeah, I think I'll go with Leeds then all the locals. All the locals, <laughs> <laughs> all the locals in the Grazies won't be lynching me when I go in. So yeah, definitely Leeds, number one. So, so, so you're, not, you're not actually a, a football supporter in the sense you don't really have a team or anything? It's just, you just... <laughs> Not particularly. If, it, if it's on the television, uh, I might watch it for 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, but like I say, I'm, pr- I'm not an, an avid sort of follower or supporter. So with regards to the coaching side then, do you predominantly, when when the kids are getting older, are you predominantly in doing the rugby side of things or is it is it just still split with both of you and Anthony doing the football or how, how do you run that? When it comes to the older side and it's our development session and our uh, TC Performance Academy session, it's Anthony who will... Uh, We'll plan the sessions. He's uh, he's got a little bit more knowledge in uh, football, a little bit better understanding than me. So I kind of leave it to him. I could probably put a session together, um, but uh, yeah, I think Anthony definitely put the best session together. Obviously, you want the best of the best, don't you? So it yeah, comes down to Anthony then, yeah. yeah. Right, we grow, growing up um, when you were younger and everything. What what was what was your best sport? I'm guessing from what we've just discussed, I'm guessing anti yours was football. Did you play at a certain level or were you just local team? Or Mine were always local team. I did represent uh, Wakefield a few times, but I also played badminton. Um, I was the Wakefield school double champion all five years through high school. Oh, wow. So That's quite an achievement. Yeah. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit, though, to, uh, to my teammate that were Adam McGritton. Um, so did he carry you then? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, he, he was school number one. I was number three. <laughs> Fair I, enough. I was number four, but we worked together. He was left hander as well, so up there oh, was a little be, bit stronger. That would so. have been good for you. And then Mick, what was what was your main sport during school? My main sport was rugby, both uh, at school or high school rugby union, and then away from school was uh, rugby league. Oh, same as me. I did that. I was yeah. a rugby rugby union all the way through school, but then came out and was the rugby league, and then got bullied by everybody else who won't play rugby league because we were up. Up north, that was the main thing that I got dragged into. So, yeah, understand that. Um, with the teams that you played for, is there any anything? With the, like I said, were they just local teams that were just local to the area, or did you have any other aspirations? Did you you said badminton that you were a champion of that around our area? But with football, did you win any trophies at the football, even for at local level? Um, in the junior section, no. Uh, I just won the individual trophies for end of season performances. Um, but for me, junior football, I was just playing with my friends. Um, and then recently, I think three years ago, I won League and Cup double with an open age team that I play for. It's not bad. Yeah, first season with them as well, so quite good. Uh, we moved into the top division, things got hard. But um, now I'm running my back in with my junior team, but running up, open age team, second team. So it's a tough season, try to run the team and play at the same time, but it's enjoyable with lads, so... That's it. That's what people. A lot of people do, don't you? You keep your connections with your sport just to have the good times and everything. So, moving on to that, then. So, do you have any stories, changing room stories that you might have had when you were younger, or or more recent ones with anything that's happened in the changing room that that's clean that you can mention? Yeah, I think there's probably quite a lot that's gone on in in changing rooms in anybody's sporting life, sort of throughout their career. But there's probably only a handful that we could maybe uh, put on air. Um, obviously when I was, a, I was a lot younger probably um, very immature some people say I'm still very immature um, <laughs> but, but one that instantly springs to mind is that somebody while we were getting changed to go out and play somebody actually put some fiery jack on somebody else's um, jock strap <laughs> <laughs> needless to say after two minutes of this guy wearing his jock strap he got quite heated under the collar can you mention his name? Can we embarrass him? I believe it was Nathan Drury from the Alton Raiders, but I can say it was a long time, long time ago, ago. Long time ago. Brilliant prank! Brilliant prank! What What do you guys do? Guys do then? Obviously, uh, Ante, you're at the school. You got and you're doing the cops to, uh, tops coaching and everything like that. How do you unwind? How do you How do you like put a stop to the work and then just generally chill out, relax? What What do you What do you do? I spend a lot of my time. Um, Really, outside of work, on FIFA. That's my... <laughs> on FIFA. I'm, I'm, so you're I'm, trying to stop kids playing too many computer games, but then you do it. Yes. Uh, that, I suppose it's your downtime. It's, yeah, it's yeah. different. I spent it's probably only a couple of hours, a few games. Depends. If, I, if I'm with lads, then obviously it's a lot longer, but we don't get together that long because they work, they work situations, they're on shifts and that. So 
don't spend as much time as it. And your hours must be taken up pretty much during the school, the tots coaching, and then you're quite limited with time. And yeah. Especially the marketing, the accounting, and everything else that you yeah, do. Yeah, it is busy, but I do find time to, to look after myself. Um, but I think other things that I do, do I have started enjoying second dog for a walk. My mum's dog, seeing as, uh, bless her, she sliced the tendon oh, God. before Christmas. So God. I helped out a little bit there, and it's, I quite enjoyed doing that, so... Something I'll stick to even when when she gets back walking properly. Something to clear the mind, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Mick, what's what would you do to unwind? Um, to unwind, probably nothing very exciting. I like reading. I have a dog, so I spend plenty of time with the dog. Um, on my days off, I'll just jump in the car, look at a destination on uh, Sat Nav, and off we go. I haven't got a clue where we're going, what walk we're going on. I just kind of follow my nose and sometimes it has bitten me on the backside where I've been lost at the top of a mountain. Um, so maybe uh, a footnote to myself is do a little bit more research before I set off. Before you go anywhere. But it's good, I suppose, it is good just to get out, even that walk, like you said, with the dog, or just just clear your mind of everything so you can think clearly, help you plan the, the lessons better, or you can just literally have an epiphany, can't you, of what, what you want to do and when you want to take things. Um, with regards to... Um, what, what what how to unwind and everything i've asked this question to all of everybody who's on our podcast and it's basically if you could have dinner with three people dead or alive who would they be and why go on anthony i'll let you do that one first um first one for me is uh, lucas Adderby. um always loved him when he were at leeds uh being a center back myself inspired to be like him um other one muhammad ali uh just loved Watching how he taught, I would just love, just love to have a, have a conversation with him and His get charisma. Yeah, just everything about him. Um, and then third one, uh, being a granddad, because unfortunately I never got to meet him, so I'd have to stick him on there just to just to get to know him really for me. So, see what it was about, and yeah, because well, I've, I've heard all the stories. I, I'm, I'm everything like him apparently, so it'd be, <laughs> that it'd be, could be a good one. Yeah, that, that could be interesting uh, sitting down with him. But, yeah, they're the three for me. The three for you. Make have you got your three? I have, yeah, but first of all, who's uh, Lucas Radderby? Oh, here we go. <sighs> here we go. Um, the, the the three that I would choose, um, probably I'd like to meet myself at 16, invite myself to dinner. I think there's a lot of lessons that I've sort of learned over the years that I'd like to pass on to a sort of stubborn, headstrong 16-year-old who thought he knew it all. Um Second one would be um, Sean Connery. I'd love to hear some of the tales that he's got to say over a, uh, a meal and a glass of wine. And you're going to have to help me out here, Peter. What was the third one that I put down? I can't third remember. Third one that you've put down here, Sean Connery. A World War One fighter pilot. Yeah, definitely. Um, that would so, be interesting, to be fair. Oh, I mean, some of the tales that must be... Some of the, 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 the heroic tales that must tell in, in, in terrible conditions and... Uh, be so interesting. I just think that when you see them on Facebook and they're ninety odd years old and and the tales they're telling, they're so they're so selfless. Um, and you just can't imagine what hardships, what bravery they did it. And some of these guys were only sort of eighteen, nineteen years old, twenty. And it seems like water off a duck's back. Everything they've done and they've just, just yeah, like, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're so noble. Yeah. Uh, and we have a lot to thank them for. So I just like to hear sort of some of the tales that they've got to say. Yeah, I'm spending some time with them. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that one. Yeah, definitely got a lot, a lot to thank them for. Um, with regards to the business then going forward, um, what inspires you to keep going? What inspires you to push your business? I, th- I think for me, it's just seeing how far um, as a company we, we, c- we can go. It's, it's a challenge. We, like Anthony said at the beginning, I think we started off with... Was it one rugby, one football, or was it two football? Started off with two football, half an hour sessions, yeah. 20 kids, and then it's just grown from there. And we did think we were Billy, big ones. Yeah, you know, to two, start two, with, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, we've got two yeah. classes, we've got two, two football and rugby. Oh, we, we, we're there, we've made it. As Conor McGregor would say, red panty day, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> but now but now we've, we've, we've got oh, probably 30 plus classes um, I'd like to think we could grow those um, in in different areas, and I'd also like to think that we can give opportunity to some young aspiring coaches uh, who share our passion in coaching who could come along and possibly mentor those. Yeah, that, that'd be what I'd like to see. 
Yeah, that'd be a good thing. Then maybe even like, well, like I mentioned it before, maybe franchising the business out in the long run, as long as you've got the right franchi- uh, franchisees, is that a word? Franchisees on it, um, who you can trust and actually live up to your aspirations and your your targets and everything you want to do to take it forward and grow. Um, what would be a top tip um, that you would give somebody who is starting out in, example, the coaching business or starting out in any business, really? What what would the tip be or what would what would advice would you be able to give them? Plan. Plan. To put something in plan, I think, for me, my plan, didn't know what I was really doing. So for me, I looked at Mick because he had that business before and he helped me to like structure and understand how businesses work, how what we need to do to start off with rather than just rushing in because I knew how to coach. I felt I knew how to coach. Yeah. Uh, looking back, I didn't know how to coach as well as I do now. But yeah, definitely plan like what you need to get. Find out and research as well what you need to, if, to, before you start for me. I'm not sure if there's anything. Um, I have to agree with what all Anthony said, but for, for me, I'm going to sort of use a, a, a rugby uh I don't think it's an anecdote, but yeah, I think you've got to stop in the arm wrestle. And by stopping in the arm wrestle, I mean the longer you can stop around in your business, I think the more, the better chance you have of being successful. There's quite a few businesses out there. You see the, the put a course on for six weeks and then you, you don't see them again. I think you've got to give it, if you're, a, if, you're a business, if you're a businessman or you've got your own business, I think you've got to give it at least 12 months uh, and then look where you are at 12 months. You can't just think, oh, I'm going to have a go, and after two or three months, go, it's not working. Yeah, you got you got to continue to do it. Is my, my, one of one of mine is mine is planning, then obviously taking massive action on that plan, and then thirdly, it actually ties in as well. It's just persistence. It's persistently going. Yeah, you can have good days, you can have bad days, mm. you can have good weeks, bad weeks, but it's just that that drive of keeping going, going forward, and making sure that you you, you keep into your standards. I think, and then you, you're not you're not defaulting yourself. You're not you're not looking bad on yourself. You're not trying to change too much. You just go in with the plan and you're sticking to it, and having confidence in that plan. And usually, well, being being five years into it, that you guys, you know, you can't be doing anything bad at all. So it's 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 inspirational to see, and it's nice to get inside your head of where you where you think and what you can give. It, when you first started, then compared to now, what bit of advice would you give yourselves? now than when you, when you first started what is it something that you've you've kind of learned but you'd wish you'd already knew it when you first was starting tots coaching um yeah that's a, it's a tough one that for me um probably the, the, the lesson planning uh getting it out there earlier um sometimes it could be a couple of days before or a day before so just giving yourself real time to to look into what you've planned and then getting it through your head, processing it, and then when you do deliver it that's on a Saturday morning, it goes a lot smoother. You're delivering it to the best of your ability yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely d- delivering it to the best of your ability that way. Um, and I think it helps, obviously now, something we do do, but Monday is like deadline there, session plans up, and then all the l- lads can see what they've got to deliver for the week and they know where they are, so definitely... Do they have any questions? I'm guessing they've got all week then to they've ask got all week, and yeah, find to out ask. what they need. Yeah, yeah. I think for for, for me is, um, and this is a hard one because I think a lot of people do do it is worry. Um, it, it it doesn't do you any good worrying uh, what will be what will be. But when you sort of run your own business or other facets in life, uh, you, you you do worry and you, and you are concerned. Uh, probably, uh, I use myself as an example. I'm a, a quite a bit of a worry and in, in the years gone by I've like well that session's not doing that well and that one's not doing that well but then I'll say well hang on a minute you look at it look at the overall picture and we've it could be that we've got 10 20 percent increase in kids and I think things go full cycle we've looked at some classes and and before Christmas there were a, there were a couple that are not doing particularly well and we talked about cancelling them um, and and now after Christmas they're, they're absolutely flying so for me would be uh, as difficult it is, try not to worry so much. Yeah, it's trying. I'm, I'm listening to Ant Milton, his new book, The Fear Bubble, and he mentions that about not not worrying about anything until you you, you physically kind of have to, or you you envisage being in a bubble of fear, and then when you get into that bubble, then you deal with it and cope with it, and then use 
the fuel of the fear to actually get over that next hurdle and push forward, which is, yeah, you shouldn't be panicking, should you, if, you, if your class isn't doing that good because around the corner the following week, especially with the new way to book in, with the new booking system you've got, you, you could wake up the next morning and you've just got stacks of kids on your class. Bonkers. Yeah, I'm going to say it's like January is a, b- a big time for us as well after Christmas. Most people do work. But I think actually this month we've had nearly 30 new customers come and at least have a taster session. That's bonkers, that, yeah, isn't exactly. it? And That's everybody's meant to have no money or they're, they're, they're running low or trying to trying to basically keep hold of the pennies. Yeah, so. So, and I think we've returned probably about 90% of them as it is. So and some are down to situations where classes don't really fit in with all the children or younger siblings. So, yeah, so... Oh, it's, it's a massive, massive achievement. That yeah. massive, you should be very proud of that one. What, what are your, what are your targets and aspirations then for, uh, for twenty twenty? What are you looking to do? Are you looking to grow a certain amount of classes? Are you looking to get a certain amount of students on your classes? And what, what are you, what are you planning? What are your targets? Um, we we sh- we should have uh, Anthony mentioned before about planning. We should have sort of designated sort of uh, targets in place already, but. Maybe Anthony has and he's not told them about me, but I just... Um, <laughs> he's blaming you now, mate. <laughs> it's all my fault in there. I d- no, I, I, just, I just think our overall one is, is to sort of con- to en- to continue to enjoy what we do uh, and try to get at least maybe another three or four classes out there if we can, but a, a lot of the time it depends on the timing's got to be right, the availability of coaches, the, uh, the venue is probably another key one, is the footfall there, or is it just people you know, use it on a on an evening? So yeah, just to continually uh, go in the direction that we're going, and if we can add another three or four sort of uh, classes on, that'd be great. If we could get another three or four coaches on board, well, even better. Right, fantastic. Right then, so I've done this with every every guys and girls we've had on here. I bought you a present each, so you can pick it out of the, out of my bag. Don't get too excited though. All right. Grab yourself a gift. Thank you very much for being on our podcast show. Um, after Anthony's finished rummaging around. Can you, um, Anthony, how can people get in touch with you again then um, to book any of your taster sessions? Um, so you think to get that basically, a taste session is a free session, isn't it? With it yourself? is, yeah. Taste session is a free session. Uh, other than obviously you can book on or you don't have to come back until some kids are not old enough. Uh, easiest way to get in touch though is through Facebook. Uh, even me or Mick can answer their messages. Just search Tots Coaching on Facebook. Also, you can ring us on uh, 07517 11 or our email address is totscoaching at gmail.com and uh, one of us will get back to you as soon as we can. Right, thank you very much. Right, guys, that's it. This is uh, Anthony and Mick from Tots Coaching. Thank you very much for being on our second podcast, Bubble and Squeak. Uh, thank you for coming down. Have a great day and I wish you all the best for the future in 2020. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.